What's up, finishers? You are in your last day. Congrats. We are in day five, chapter five of James. We're finishing this. We're going to close this book. Uh, hopefully we continue to learn from it afterwards, but you've made it through the whole book of James after today. So I'm super excited for us to see where we've gone uh, over these last couple days and just reflect on that at the end. Uh, but James is not ending light for us. Uh, just a heads up, he's coming hard for us today, but we can get through it. So before we dive in, I want to pray. Would you pray with me now before we read our scripture? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you today uh, for today. Thank you for just giving us an opportunity to learn from you. God, I just pray that um, although this content might be hard, God, I just pray that you have something stick out to us that uh, we can act on that would be honorable to you. God, I just pray that you have us live honorable to you in the best way we possibly can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so James chapter 5, uh, NLT version of the Bible. We're going to get through it. So here we go. Uh, ch chapter 5 starts like this. It says, Look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away and your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver are corroded. The very wealth you are counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. This corroded treasure you have hoarded will testify against you on the day of judgment. For listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord of heaven's armies. Yikes, right? <laughs> That's uh, quite the intro I was hoping for, but this is God's word, right? When I hear this, I, I don't want to just like assume, that's not me. I want to reflect on it a bit. Like It makes me wonder, is this me? And have I cheated people? Have I hurt people? Have I hoarded too much? I want to reflect on this. And if so, what needs to change? So we'll kind of revisit that later on. Uh, verse 5, it continues. It says, You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourself for the, the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed innocent people who do not resist you. Okay, yikes. Let's see if we can get some understanding from this. For this next section that we're going to look at, uh, it kind of describes it a little bit more. But it's going to be uh, verses 7 to 12. And I want you to read it on your own, actually. So verses 7 to 12. And then underline anything that sticks out to you in those verses. I'm going to read it right alongside you. But verses 7 to 12 on your own. Here we go. All right, I feel James is a little scattered here, but there were some things I underlined, and I'm curious if maybe we underlined some of the same things, and if not, no worries. Um, but here's what I what I saw, and that stuck out to me. Uh, verse 7, Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. So people are waiting patiently. Uh, it's something early on in biblical times, and I'm guessing you wait patiently for things too. Uh, that just helps me know that like it's not just me. You know, when I see other people, even in scripture, are waiting patiently. But then it continues. Uh, I underlined verse 11. It says, We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. So patience, when it doesn't come, turns to suffering. And God is saying great endurance is necessary. It's part of the faith walk. So 11 says, we give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, who in the Bible, he has his own book in the Bible, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. And then the last thing that I thought was really interesting is at the end, just say a simple yes or no, so that you will not sin and be condemned, right? Uh, 
that just like reminds me, at least this is where it seems a little scattered, but it reminds me that I don't need to like fluff up my words. Just be real with people. And honestly, I think that's what God wants from us. That's what I feel I'm getting out of this verse. I don't know what you underlined, but hopefully we maybe had some of the same things. So let's go to verse 13 now together. Uh, it says this, Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. So it's kind of talking about some practices of things that we can do, uh, almost maybe even prescriptions in a sense, to help us connect with God, whether it's through praises, whether it's through sickness, whether it's just through hardships. Uh, these are things that God tells us we can do. Uh, then in 16, it says this, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. I'm underlining that. I'm underlining verse 16 because that is powerful to me. That's something that I think we should do and we should make sure that we are doing. But I don't know if we do. Do you pray with others? Do you pray for each other? Do you pray for healing? Whether that's something so minuscule in your life or something huge, are you doing that? Let's continue. Verse 17 says, Elijah was as human as we are. It's referring to a prophet. And yet, when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. When they went, then, when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings back the sinner uh, brings the sinner back from wandering, will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. I underlined that one, verse 20. I think that's just powerful. Like that we have the ability to save a person from death and to help them experience forgiveness. Am I doing that? Are you doing that? Like seeking others, helping bring others to know God. All right, we did it. We got through the whole book. Let's reflect on this chapter and then uh, we'll close things out. So some of the things that I underlined in this one, um, we, we talked about the things that we did on our own there. But uh, with that, the last section that I thought was just kind of powerful for us to like really think about is the, the last statement. The last statement in there, which is, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. Is that part of your daily life? I want to jot that down in my notebook. Like, am I actually actively seeking, bringing others to know Jesus? If so, who and how? So for me, I have a few friends that are not Christians that... I think are seeking for something um, and I've kind of like avoided even it so I want to actively model light around them of being a Christian around them of not necessarily like spouting off verses or anything like that but actively being around them and sharing who who Jesus is to me um, so I'm gonna write a few of those things down And I'm actually going to write down as well um, when I'm going to do that. Because I want accountability. I want action. That's kind of what James has been all about. So as we kind of wrap up this whole section, James chapter 1 to 5, I want to just reflect on the, the whole book. What stuck out to you? What's something that you have added into your life uh, from these days together? What's something that you've learned about God? What's something that's going to permanently change your faith walk? For me, a big part is faith having action. Making sure that it's not just like words. It's not just spouting things off that I know verses or scripture, but that I am actually living the way God wants it's, that's not why I'm saved, but that is how I model my belief. 
And that's something I, I, I want to jot down that I make sure happens daily for me. For you, I want you to spend another 30 seconds or so of what maybe you've learned in this journey. But you did it. You got through all five days together. Yay, I'm so excited for you. We're gonna celebrate like, I don't know, like I can't really celebrate with you over a video, but maybe you need to go get yourself a coffee or a treat or something, but celebrate because you connected with God in a way that a lot of people don't. And that's so inspiring. I'm, in, I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm inspired by you for doing that. Uh, and I'm excited to see how God can use maybe just this as an on-ramp for future uh, opportunities where you are connecting with God on your own through scripture and through prayer. Would you pray with me as I close? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to grow together. God, I just pray that we continue to seek you, to read scripture, to connect with you, to pray to you. And God, I just pray that you have this not just be head knowledge, but have it be something that uh, becomes a part of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good luck and celebrate. See ya.